Oh yeah, it's YouTube video time. I got a package in the mail today and I'm gonna tell you all about it. I'm pretty excited. It may not be what you think it is. All right, here we go. Um, I got a package in the mail. I pre-ordered some books and they arrived uh, today, which is New Comic Book Wednesday. So that's pretty cool that the books arrived on the same day that they were released. And uh, I'm gonna get into this right now. Okay, when Marvel started making these uh, facsimile edition books, um, everything was cool because they were doing a lot of Silver Age, Bronze Age books. Everything was good. But then what they started to do is make them so that they started to look like the real deal, look like the real McCoy, um, like you're about to see. So you would be able to tell for the Silver Age books if they made ones, you know, uh, back in the old days when they were like 12 cents, 15 cents, you would be able to see that. Uh, of course, the facsimile editions um, cost about $4, I believe. So when they would do that, they did a bunch of old books. I think they did like Fantastic Four, number one was one of them that they did. I think they did um, the uh, X-Men number one, the original, and all of that. So what they started doing was they kept on making books that would start to get into the modern age, and that created some problems. And uh, one of the main offenders for that was this book right here. This book right here is Ultimate Fallout number four, uh, first appearance of Miles Morales. Now, this is not a facsimile. This is the real deal. This is a real thing. Um, just so you can see. Yeah, there it is. You can see up there that it's the uh, it's the, the real true first appearance and not the facsimile. So I guess what was starting to happen was um, people were trying to pass off facsimile edition comic books as the real first appearance in the first print, which they are not. So, um, and this book was kind of controversial, I guess, because this is um, the Ultimate Fallout 4 from 2011. And I guess the only difference was that um, in the facsimile where it says Marvel right here, I believe it I had a red background. I couldn't find my other copy because I have a uh, raw copy, but I couldn't find it. I, I only know where my graded copy is. So it was red right here um, for the Ultimate Fallout 4 first uh, print, 9.8, and um, it had a similar um, barcode thing. Because when they got into the age of the barcodes, um, they kind of left them the same. So this was a problem, and, and a lot of people, I guess, got taken advantage of, So because um, they couldn't tell the difference between a uh, first edition, first print, and the uh, facsimile, which is only worth a few dollars. So today, is the day that um, the facsimile edition for Edge of Spider-Verse 2, first appearance of Gwen Stacy as uh, Spider-Gwen came out. So I'm in pretty deep for this book. Um, so I'm gonna show you the difference between um, the facsimile and the real one. So um, back here, I have uh, two of my 9.8s. These are, um, from 2014, these are the first prints. So we're gonna go down the line and I'm gonna show you uh, some of the books I have for this. Okay, so here we go. So this is another um, 9.8 that I have of uh, the same book. Um, nice. Okay, so facsimiles came out today. And the difference is that um, this came out today and it's, um, it's like this. At the bottom, you don't see the information for um, the, the digital code. I'll bring it a little closer. See that like white gap right there? Um, that is where the information for the digital code should be because inside of the, um, the, the first prints, um, there is a thing here for it says, uh, it says bonus digital edition. And they have like a little sticker on the inside that you could peel off and it had a code and you could redeem it to read them online. Because at this time, Marvel was trying to get people to read um, comic books electronically, I guess, on your iPhone or your, your, your cell phone or your iPad or, you know, tablet, whatever you have. So they were trying to get that off the ground at this point. Um, so this being the facsimile edition does not have that. And um, both of these uh, books are uh, $3.99. So they have, as you can see, um, yeah, I got, I'll just show you. They have the um, UPC code there. So it looks very similar um, to that. 
So this is uh, the, the facsimile that came out. I pre-ordered these and I was pretty excited because I went um, pretty deep on these. I got a whole bunch of them on pre-order and I was pretty excited to see that they arrived at my door today. So um, in all, I got um, 10 copies of the facsimile edition um, that came today and they all look uh, pretty nice, pretty minty, real, real cool. So, um, yeah, so the difference is, um, yeah, is this, yeah, there's one, one of my loose ones, one of my, so as you can see here, the one on the top is the facsimile edition that just came out. And um, you can see this this gap here. They moved the Marvel graphic over here. Uh, this is other information here that's still there. And there's a thing here for it, it says um, bonus additional, bonus digital edition. See inside for details. So um, for the facsimile edition that just came out today, they do not offer that. So um, so that's how you can tell. Uh, proceed with caution because uh, some people got taken advantage of with the Ultimate Fallout Four. Uh, I know my, most most. Seasoned collectors know what they're doing, but there's some people that um, apparently do not because I saw a bunch of videos, um, I guess it was last year when that came out, and some people got taken advantage of. So this is a similar thing because the barcodes are almost similar, kind of, and they're both $3.99, and it has this extra information here, and um, they sl slid the graphic over there, and um, the, the coloring looks the same pretty much. Um, so this is um, the first print, and uh, I have a few of these as well. Um, uh, raw copies. Okay, well, I have some other um, graded copies that I'm going to uh, show you since I have you here, and um, maybe you like to see them. So I'm in pretty deep on these um, Spider-Gwen. Um, yeah, so this is the first appearance of uh, Spider-Gwen. Not the first appearance of Gwen Stacy, uh, but the first appearance of um, Spider-Gwen. And then um, this is the second print. The second print has that um, blue at the bottom. And you can see in the corner there where it says um, number two, it says second print. Now, this book is pretty rare, um, believe it or not. I looked up today on, um, yeah, I'm gonna take this one down. I looked up on CGC's census and uh, I found out that in a 9.8, this uh, blue one, well, the blue one here, second print, uh, there's only 91 copies ever uh, graded in a 9.8 on CGC census. Now this one, the uh, first print, that is uh, more valuable and more in demand. You can tell by the white bar at the bottom. That's how you tell the first print. And then the second print has the blue. So I looked today in the blue label for the first print, which is this one. I saw that there's 2,777 copies. So nearly 2,800 copies for um, this one right here, with the, the first print with the white bottom. Now, this book here, the second print uh, in a 9.8 blue label, I'm not counting the gold label ones because there's just a few stragglers here and there, um, just blue labels I'm counting for now. So in the blue label, um, this book here is 91 copies. There's only 91 of these, so almost 100 91, and then this one has um, 2,777. So uh, just strictly uh, blue label right here, blue label. So basically um, for every one of these, there are 28 of these. Now this book is more valuable in the first print, but this book here is one of the absolute uh, pride and joys of my collection. Because it, for me to get this book, um, I was on eBay about three years ago, and um, there, weren't, there weren't 91 copies back then. I think there was only like less than 50 that had graded in a 9.8. So I tried getting this book um, every day for like two years. Well, maybe not every day, maybe every other day, like three or four times a week for two years. I had it on my um, eBay um, search list. For, so when it came up, I would see it. Now, one of the problems with this book is that when it is a 9.8, there's a few things wrong with it. Sometimes you see like those Newton rings on the case, or there's another problem with this book. Um, this book sometimes suffers from those little corner tears that CGC um, will tell you that they are um, manufacturing defect. Now, for me, I don't like that because when I get a 9.8 book, I want it to be nice. I want it to look right. I, I don't want it to look like it's damaged, even though I know it's manufacturing. I know they let that slide. I just don't really like it. Um, so 
I wanted a, a nice one that did not have the, the, the binary corner tears and I didn't want um, any problems with it. I didn't want any Newton rings or anything. So it's even in the older case. I don't even mind that. It kind of gives it a little bit of character. But um, this was at a time when they were like less than 50 and I was looking, uh, looking, looking, looking uh, like three or four times a week for two years to, to try to get this. This was a few years ago. Now they're a little more plentiful. There's 91 copies and a 9.8 now um, in, a, in the, um, the blue label. So uh, this is one of the absolute um, pride and joys of my collection. This is a hard book to get. It's, it's pretty rare um, compared to the other um, first one because I have um, three of these and a 9.8. Um, this one here and the, the two behind it. Um, so basically for every one of these, there are almost 28 of these in a 9.8. So that's that's a lot. Um, I think one of the things that happened is, I'm not exactly sure, but I think comic shops didn't um, order these. Because I think there was like a short window or something like that because um, what happened next was um, there are five copies um, and then there's a ratio variant and there's like two store variants too. So I think this one was only out for a short amount of time. Um, and comic shops just didn't seem to order them, maybe because um, they still had these ones on the shelves and they were, maybe they were plentiful. I don't know exactly why, but uh, comic stores did not order them because the third printing has um, a different um, cover to it, which is this one. Um, yeah, so this is the, the third printing here. And uh, this is a little different. They call this like a design variant, designer variant. It's a little different. I like it. I like it a lot. Um, it's pretty cool. It shows um, Gwen with her uh, ballet slippers and everything. So they're always supposed to be like this this color. I've seen other times when uh, they're different color, but they're always supposed to be that. So uh, that, that's known as a, a um, design variant. That was one of the first ones that they had. So a lot of people like this one because it was an alternative to the, the first two that I showed. Um, there's way more of these than, than the other one. In the third printing in a 9.8 blue label, there are 502 on the census, not counting uh, gold label, because I think the gold label is like maybe 20 or 30, something like that. So, um, yeah, so they had um, 502 of these, and like I say, the second print only had 91 um, copies. So I love this book so much, uh, including this one, this is pretty nice that I did get one of the gold labels. I think it's like 25 or 30. So I'm going to show that off to you now. The gold label that I have is this one. This is um, Edge of Spider Verse number two, gold label 9.8, um, signed by uh, Stan Lee. Stan Lee signed that. So uh, I'm trying to get it right. So yeah, so maybe you can see that better. I don't know. Let's see. I'll bring it a little closer. So there it is, signed by Stan Lee, and it's in the uh, old school label. So yeah, so I dig this one. And um, although Stan Lee did not create um, Spider-Gwen, he did co-create um, Gwen Stacy. Gwen Stacy's first appearance is in uh, Amazing Spider-Man number 31, which is this book right here. So um, that's her first appearance, uh, co-created by Stan Lee and Steve Ditko. This is Amazing Spider-Man number 31 from 1965. Uh, yeah, this is a pretty pretty sharp copy, pretty sharp. Uh, the, the, the spine is pretty tight. I'll just show you that real quick. Eee, pretty cool, pretty cool, pretty cool. Not too bad, not a lot wrong with this book. So I gotta get it graded at some point, but uh, yeah, man, this is pretty cool. I like this. So um, yeah, so I this came up um, and he, Stanley signed it. It says here he signed in Let's see here. In 2015, he signed. So yeah, so pretty cool. It's got the old case and everything. So um, even though he didn't really have a hand in the whole Spider-Gwen thing, he did co-create um, Gwen Stacy, which of course is in this, this book right here. Pretty cool. So um, yeah. So as I said, there were um, five printings in all. So that was the third one I showed you. I have a regular... Blue label 9.8, and I also have the um, the gold label on the 9.8 for the third printing, and then this one is the fourth printing. Uh, yeah, also in a 9.8, pretty cool. So yeah, um, nice. So this one, uh, let's see, fourth printing. I looked it up today. There's 190 copies 
uh, of the fourth printing in a blue label and a 9.8. There are some gold label ones, I guess, people sign them. Cool, but uh, yeah, so this one, um, 190. So yeah, so that's, that's pretty cool. All right, moving right along. I have the fifth printing, which has this the, uh, orange thing at the bottom. You can always tell these by looking in the, see what says number two, and then it says fifth printing. You can always tell that if you're not good at reading these, these barcodes. Um, but anyhow, so yeah, so this is also um, a 9.8. And uh, fifth printing is 203, um, 9.8 uh, blue label copies. So yeah, so pretty cool. So I got all of them in a uh, 9.8. Um, I have the store variants and I also have the, um, what do you call that? The, the one in 25, but I don't have them graded. So I just pulled all of the ones I had graded um, and I pulled out the, uh, the other uh, copies I have, let's see, of the first printing. Let's see. So yeah, first printing has that, um, that white stuff at the bottom. Let's see. Yeah, so the first printing has the, the white at the bottom as uh, opposed to the, the orange right here. So um, I have a few of those. So I'll show those off in a minute. Here we go. So yeah. So these ones are not the facsimile ones because the facsimile ones have the white gap and it doesn't have that um, digital edition information at the bottom. That's how you can tell. So yeah, so here you go. See that right there where it says about the digital? So um, yeah, so I have um, a bunch of copies of these. Let's see, and I got this one, and I got this one, and this one. So all together I have um, five raw copies, they're all minty fresh, and um, three in the, uh, the first print, the 9.8, right here you can see that's the thing. And then, um, like I say, the facsimile edition came today and I'm pretty excited about it. So I may even get one of those graded just to, just to, you know, have a whole bunch of them. So why not? I mean, I'm already this far into it because I have the um, store variant ones. I uh, have a few copies of those and the 1 in 25. I have to get all that stuff graded, but um, these are the ones I have slabbed for now. So I figured I'd pull them out. So yeah, so, so here you go. So once again, just to you know, put not too fine a point on this, but here you go. So this one is the one in the slab, has the marble, has the digital information, has this other information over here, and the uh, facsimile book does not have that. So that's how you can tell, even though um, they both have a $3.99 price tag. So um, yeah, so that's pretty cool. I'll take all these ones down and I'll leave you today with the Let's see, the first appearance, um, number 31 from 1965, real beautiful copy, nothing really wrong with it, um, pretty good. So I'm gonna mail this in at some point. I have to get a uh, silver age submission going because I believe for CGC you have to send the books in pre-1975 all in one batch. So these books, these other books obviously are moderns and uh, that book is not, so I would have to like uh, get a, a different batch going to mail it in but uh, and get it graded. I will at some point, but I just don't want it to leave my house. I, I love this book so much. It's just really nice. So, yeah. So, um, thank you for watching. I do appreciate your time. Keep reading some comics. Keep having some fun. Make some comments in the comments section and let me know what you think. Are you getting any of these books? Do you have any of them? Let me know. So, all right. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you on the next one. Have a good one. Bye.